Hi there, Phil Smy coming to you again from Japan. This time, just a little talk about some business ideas. Recently, I was watching this lecture by this guy named Dan Ariely. I think that's how you would pronounce his name. I was, he was on Japanese TV for some reason. They were broadcasting one of his lectures. And I'd never heard of Ariely before, but really interesting stuff he was talking about. Um, I can't figure out how to get Japanese TV into my computer and then onto you. So what I'm just going to do is give you a little bit of a summary of what I heard. One thing in his lecture that he touched on was something that I brought up in one of my Peter Drucker videos. I'm always amazed and, uh, you know, it's kind of astounded by the fact that Drucker really covered a lot of these concepts early on. And it's now that people are diving into them a little bit deeper. And this is one of those concepts, and that's the not invented here bias. And... Like I say, it's worth investigating, and Ariely is doing that kind of scientifically. Recently, I've had several requests to do a video on what science is. The not invented here bias I brought up in that part about, um, what was it, the episode where I'm talking about entrepreneur, entrepreneurial strategies, part two, and it was in the uh, entrepreneurial judo section where I talked about Sony. The story was that I related from Drucker was that, you know, in 1947, Bell Labs came up with the idea, well, they invented the transistor. And everybody knew that the transistor was going to change radio, but no American company did anything about it. And so Sony could come in a few years on, uh, get a license for the technology, and within five years, Sony dominated the global radio, portable radio business in five years. Pretty amazing. Why did that happen? In part, that happened because the radio business at the time in America was controlled by the likes, you know, companies like GE. And GE didn't invent the transistor. They were making vacuum tubes. So they placed a greater value on the thing that they had invented versus the thing that Bell Labs invented. This is what, you know, you call a value bias. In other words, you make it, you make your thing worth much higher than someone else's of the same. Ariely looked into this and did a really interesting experiment. He gave a group of people uh, instructions on how to make some origami, funnily enough, origami. You know, little folded things. I'm sure I'll have a video clip. And so he gave people instructions on how to make those who had never made it before. And they made the things, and of course the things aren't so good. And then he asked them, how much would you pay to keep this thing? You know, in other words, what would you value this piece of origami at? Um, or we're just going to chuck it in the garbage. But then he asked a group of just observers what they would value those things at. And of course, the makers valued it up here. The observers valued it down here because let's face it, the things are pretty crappy. But then he took another interesting step. He got another group of makers and another group of observers, but this time he didn't actually give the makers the instructions. He just showed them the piece of origami and and they had to make it. And it, that's pretty bloody hard to do. So of course the thing they ended up was with was, was crappy, even more crappy than the first one. And then he went through the same experiment. What would you value it at? But of course, the makers had put a lot more effort into it. So they valued it even higher, even though it was worse. But the observers valued it even lower because it was worse. So you can see, when we put 
uh, value on the things that we've done, we take into account the effort. And this is another thing from Drucker's uh, teachings, and that is customers don't care about the effort that goes in, they care about the value to them. This is a lesson I think it's really important to learn in business. We see this over and over again. Companies who think their products are great. I look at app designers. I mean, app developers think that their app is going to change the world. Every app developer kind of thinks that in the back of their mind or even in the front of their mind because of this value bias. You can't see these things rationally. I think it's almost impossible to completely remove the rationale or the irrationality from it. But as a business person, we have to do that. And there's nothing more soul destroying than, you know, working hard on something and then finding out that nobody wants it. And the way you get around that, of course, is you find out that people want it before you work on it. You know, that's the important part of marketing and customer driven development. So that's my little summary of what I saw the other day from Dan Ariely. He's got some books that I'm going to read and hopefully do a book review on. And I hope you stick around. And if you find these kind of topics interesting, I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love for you to subscribe and we'll talk even more about it. Thanks. Thanks.